<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm your host, Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. And this marvelous, marvelous panel. We, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Dan before his camera goes out again. <laughs> and Earl, our family history guy. Hi, Dan. Hello, everybody. We're glad you're here. He might be popping in and out. He's having camera issues. And we've got Mary Kirchirati from MKR Genealogy. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Nice to be always, here today. It's always good to have you here. Laura Hedgecock from Treasure Chest of Memories is here. Hi, Laura. Hi. So glad you're here. And Melissa Barker, our archive lady, is in the house with us tonight. We're so glad, glad that you're here, Melissa. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. This time, as you know, we we continue to talk about uh, the episodes of Finding Your Roots. We are going to talk about episodes five and six. Episodes Episode five had Viola Davis and Brian Cox. And then um, episode six had Joe Magniello and Tony Gonzalez. So each of them had very interesting stories, surprises in their story. DNA telling them things that they had no idea. Sad, sad stories. Um, it's amazing the things that we learn about our families as we go through the process of going beyond dates and places um, and getting stories of their lives. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, Viola Davis. She was actually born in South Carolina, which made me happy. I was hoping they were going to do more stuff mm. in South Carolina, but they did show archive, archival records from South Carolina. Um just so you know, if you've got uh, records that you're needing, needing to look for in South Carolina, the archives have... Um, the South Carolina um, State Archives has a bunch of records digitized. So that would be the first place to stop is go see, especially the pension records, all of the uh, Civil War pension records. Because remember, if you fought um, for the South, <laughs> your pension <laughs> records are going to be in those states. They're not going to be in Washington, D.C. And some have more information than others. So anyway, I was I was pleased to see that they uh, went to the archives to find records. Um, and they do have uh, marriage records. And so one of the first things they sh they they showed was um, her grandparents uh, marriage uh, license, uh, marriage certificate, license and certificate that they had found. Um, you have to go and roll the microfilm, but you can go find it. <laughs> Those aren't. Some of them have been digitized and some of them haven't, but she actually grew up on a plantation and she was born and lived in her, um, the home that her mother was a sharecropper's house. And so, yeah. And so that's, that's where she grew up. Um, but the interesting story about that, that family, her grandparents' family um, is that they were Henry and Marie Logan. And when Henry applied for his, um uh, social security he list is listed his father as a man um named gabriel logan makes sense they were logans right but what i thought was interesting is then they said his obituary named a different dad a man named john young so i'm still trying to wrap that into my head <laughs> who knew by the obituary that it was the different man you know somebody knew to put it in the obituary laura i just know that it's just it's not the original document it's just like what people remember and what they yeah. tell the funeral home or what they tell the the newspaper so right. i just automatically assume the obituary would be less accurate was but kind it, of the yeah mind. That's the jump my brain made. Until, until they did the DNA and found out that it was <laughs> right. So somebody knew because he's the one that filled out his social security application and put his dad, the man that he'd been told was his dad. That's who he put on there. So somewhere between that <laughs> social security application and his death, somebody somewhere, and we don't know if he ever knew that the dad that raised him wasn't his biological dad. So that was that was a little shocking for her. She's like, what? And so they did do the DNA. They did do the DNA. And yeah, that that was, you know, the right, the right man. And the interesting part about that story is that Gabriel Logan, the man that he thought was his father, was found on a list of black soldiers coming back from World War I. And he was coming back from France. He disembarked in New York and apparently he never went home. 
So he deserted or just, he never went home. We don't know why he didn't go home. May, I don't know. I don't know. They didn't say if they looked at hospital records and he couldn't go home or, or what they just said. He just never, never went home. Um, the census record showed that uh, his, um, his mom was living with her parents and the children. And just down the street was this man uh, John Young, he didn't live far from her. We don't know what that relationship was. We can't assume what that relationship was. Mm -mm. But by 1930, Mr. Young and his family had moved to Charlotte. And we don't know why he had moved to Charlotte. So that was just an interesting story. And she was just saying, our lives are messy. <laughs> yeah, but didn't the, I mean, the show made some conjecture about it why did. he moved. But yes, you know, it, they had a spin on it, yeah, um, which may or may not be accurate. So right. they didn't yeah. really seem to have any yes. evidence for their speculation. Yeah. Their speculation was the family said, we don't want him living, you know, or the wife may have said, we don't want to live. We are not going to live next to this woman you had a child with and we're leaving. Right. We uh, don't know. We have no idea unless we had a journal or a letter somebody overheard it yeah yes yeah. so yeah. when you watch these shows and there's conjecture it, that's somebody's opinion about yeah. what happened somebody's 2022 yeah. or 2023 opinion about it, what happened and does not necessarily exactly. reflect or, the, the or your opinion on what you would have done in that situation i would just say <laughs> that woman, right. they're leaving we're not, yeah. we're not we're not living next to that woman so yeah yeah, yeah. so we've got yeah. to be careful with those and things. you have to you have the same thing when you're looking when you're reading family histories they were you know uh -huh. written by um family members or or even the online trees if they yes. you know it's always important to not just take information that you find for yourself i mean take it but but use it as a guide exactly um, and, be and careful find, when you're writing your own yeah, family conf stories confirm the information with yeah, as many resources as you can find it's so easy to put our own thoughts into what we would have done or mm -hmm. assume what may have been going on in the neighborhood and those kind of things. And I like that she said, um, I am an amalgamation of family stories and secrets. And aren't we all? Are we all? <laughs> <laughs> I did like also she said, we want to create a past. And then she kind of goes, it, I didn't get all her words, but she was basically saying, we want to create a narrative that matches what our fantasy is. Yes. So it was kind of interesting as he was yes. saying that. But I, I do think when we write our own stories, I do think it's okay to say, I don't know what she would have done. I would have, I mean, you can put yourself in the story <laughs> that way, but you keep it Good. in its lane. Yeah, like, keep it in its lane. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that also brings up, you know and i'm sure laura would agree with this writing your own story mm -hmm. so your motivations are out yes. there in black and exactly. white exactly. So nobody's yeah. guessing yeah, yeah. good point mary good point <laughs> that's a really yeah. are your children and your grandchildren write what they think which yeah would be very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> very, very dangerous absolutely the other story they told about um her was her great great grandfather's name was emmett howe and he was born enslaved in about 1840. And he had a pension application in the South Carolina archives for fighting with the Confederate army, which was very interesting and a little mm -hmm. taken aback by, <laughs> by Viola, I would have too, you know, I can see her going oh, inside, why, why, why? But it turns out as they do more research, and this happened a lot, um, the enslavers would have their slaves go and fight or take places, or they would have them in this case, be the bodyguard to his son. They couldn't take up arms. They couldn't have any weapons, but they can um, work around the camp, dig latrines, you know, those kind of things. They wouldn't let them have any, any ammunition or anything like that. So that's, that's what happened with that. And his pension, application is online at the archives what i don't know and what they didn't say is did he receive that pension did they approve that pension that would be interesting to find out um how south carolina looked at that 
after the war to give a um, an African-American a pension. So that would be interesting to find out because they never said, they just showed the application for the pension. Um, and then it turned out that uh, Emmett ended up being um, a tenant farmer, a sharecropper on that land that he had been enslaved on, uh, signed a contract with his former enslaver and he worked for him. So he worked that same land. I'm thinking that document, they didn't show us, but I'm thinking that document probably came from the Freedmen's Bureau records. It's probably because hmm. usually where you find that type of information is in the Freedmen Bureau records. So um, that's what I'm thinking. They probably found that, that that's where he'd been working. So um, I think she was very um, interested in, in the facts that they showed her and the documents that they showed her and the life story. And she took it like, well, this is this is what happens. This is life, you know. Everybody's got these kind of stories, and I, I thought that was really really interesting. She took everything in stride. So, has anybody else got anything they want to mention? Did I forget anything else about her story that you wanted to talk about? Are we all good? Yeah. Okay. The next story on this this episode was Brian Cox, and and um, he's a Scottish Scottish actor, right? Was he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm not. Um, it wasn't as familiar with him but I I it was interesting that they started talking to him about what he remembered about his maternal grandfather and what he remembered was is he wasn't very fond of him <laughs> and but he <laughs> put it mildly and he says he remembers this picture of this man with red flaming hair as he put it and you know just this um, man that was kind of intimidating and large and you know uh, but he doesn't know what happened to that photo, but he remembers it being there, but then it's just not there and he doesn't know what happened to it. I was so hoping that they were going to say, no, turn the page. Yeah. <laughs> and it was going to be the photo. Yeah. 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 That made me really sad that they didn't, but they were able to find out some information about him that he had never heard before. Um, and isn't that so often what happens in, in our families, and especially we see on these shows is, all this information that they absolutely had no idea about. Um, mm-hmm. And he um, he actually, and they found this in the British National Archives. Uh, he um, he fought in World War War. He enlisted and fought in World War I. Um, he enlisted with the Royal Highlanders. And so they were talking about the Royal Highlanders and there were a lot of records that were destroyed, um, but they were able to find things like war diaries. And we've talked about that before. Mm is, is yeah. going, looking for things like that because your ancestor may not be named in it, but you can find out what was going on with him because this was a war diary of his unit. Mm-hmm. The things were yeah. happening at that time. And so you get a good sense of, of if it was his unit, he should have been there and he would have been experiencing these same things. And one of the big things that was happening, especially they were saying to this group of men and they were talking about <laughs> horrible it was in the trenches that they were in but the gas the gas uh-huh. they were gassed and they really had to get up and out of there and into air if they could and so many of the soldiers at that time period came home with rest if they if they lived through it came home with respiratory issues it actually burned and bubbled their lungs and that just uh-huh. can't even imagine how much uh-huh. pain that would be and they were able to find um, a pension card and some hospital records for him. And they said he had symptoms of mm-hmm. poisoning. So they felt pretty, pretty strongly that that's what had happened to him. But then they discovered that he was honorably discharged. He had been training new recruits and that he received four war medals, four war medals. The family, I mean, they never got, where are those war medals? <laughs> why, why don't his kids and his grandkids, why Why don't they know this? Why didn't they keep these war medals? Why didn't they share it with people? Was it because his, he was like, you know, he was not a very good person. It sounded like he was a drunkard and maybe people just didn't care anymore at that point. You know, maybe they didn't want to know his story. I don't know. I think what that happens think? to a lot of us that, that have ancestors that were in war. Mm-hmm. um you know and then i don't know they it affects them i mean it affects people today when they're in war yeah. you know and and it carries with them and it just and it can destroy families and it can destroy relationships and so you know they're talking about why they didn't know well i mean because they just thought he was the way he was and 
They didn't you care. Know. They didn't want to you hear know. his stories. They didn't want to deal with him. He, right? You know. You know. Mary, were you going to say something? Well, there's a, a an interesting documentary um, on Acorn called "The Man Who Shot the War," and it's about a British man who was a photographer, mm -hmm. but also a sniper, oh. and he really struggled over what he had to do as a soldier and yeah, and yeah. really wanted nothing to do with it and it may be that the the medals might have been enough of a painful reminder to him that he just didn't want to be associated with things that he personally Very true. had to do Very we don't true. i mean we have no idea but but there's a would be a lot of explanations i think sure. as to why someone oh, would not yeah. want to keep any mementos right. of of mm -hmm. the horrors of that thing right and it was interesting because he said that finding out all these things validated he felt like it validated his grandfather's life that he mm -hmm. understood him a little bit more um and he seemed very grateful you know after wondering where that portrait was all that time and and having his mother talk about him to actually get these stories was and he even said he said he wished that his mother could know this information yeah. I'm, I'm guess i don't think they said but I must she must have been passed on but yeah, yeah they said uh she said oh i wish you know yeah. mom could know about this so yeah, yeah. On, yeah, he's not a young man, so it wouldn't no, surprise yeah. me if his, his mother was still alive. Not no. assuming anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's you know, we've been asked we we asked this question and I'm sure that um we'll ask it more and more is, you know, you know, I didn't get into what genealogy and history until I was an adult and married. Yeah. You know, I didn't care about history in school or anything like that. Now mm -hmm. I wish I had paid attention. Me but too. you know, um we all came to it different times in our lives and we probably wish we could yes. got more into it earlier, mm -hmm. yes. but um, I think life gets in the way. And I think that it's, you know, what you're exposed to maybe, but I think it, it just takes that one little whatever to click mm -hmm. you into, you know, being interested. And I think to me, it's important that we try to um, work with the younger generations, oh, absolutely. you know, <laughs> and to do that. I know that, I can tell yeah. you, I mean, and this is a little off topic, but we are, um, our local historical society, we're going to be doing a World War II program this fall. Mm -hmm. And so we're gathering information on all the World War II veterans from our area. And we've actually been able to work with the students at the high school in the history uh, class. Oh, that's and so it's been great to, because we're having them to um, pick one of their World War II ancestors and research them. What did they do? Where were they? Oh. Stuff like that. And it's sure. it's part of a class assignment, which is fantastic. You hardly ever can get a teacher to do that sometimes around here. But it has sparked um, a lot of interest in some of those students, which I'm very glad for. And Good. I hope that they continue the research. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great way to get the youth involved mm -hmm. some kind of project and then get them doing the research. Right. And, and, you know, even if they don't have a World War II ancestor, there's plenty of people out there that do that need their research. So mm -hmm. there's always somebody you could say, okay, could you research this person? And then right. they'll make a connection with that person. And especially if it's a person in the community that they like, they can say, oh my gosh, I'm finding this for this person. So I think that's a great idea. Well, he found out some other really interesting things about some great grandparents he, he had some characters in his family. He had a great um, a great grandfather named Harriet Walker. Um, <laughs> in 1833, he had a court record where he'd been throwing rocks and um, just it was a misdemeanor. He was just 17 and he, he was just out being 17. <laughs> and he was charged with assault, though. You know, none of us that have 17 year old, mm -hmm. our 70 year old kids charged with assault, but he was charged with assault. And then in 1857, at age 21, he was charged with assault again after a brawl. And the newspaper reported that he went to, to jail for six months for that one. Um, I mean, it was a continual, continual thing for him. He, um, even after he got married, he uh, was poaching, got arrested for poaching and for stealing a trowel. He was in jail for 14 days for that. Um, ended up in the poorhouse when he was 77 and died within a month of being in that poorhouse. Very sad, very, very sad. But that wasn't all. He had another, he had another maternal great grandfather who ended up in the poorhouse and he had a paternal great grandfather 
that a great great grandfather that was jailed and ended up in the poorhouse. And so these were just sad, sad stories. But I think it happened so much in that time period, and, and especially in Scotland and, and England and and Ireland. That's where they they put people, you know, that couldn't couldn't pay their own way, couldn't pay their bills. Um, they would take them from jail, put them in the poorhouse, and. And, you know, I think we've all seen what those places were like. We've all researched them or seen documentaries on them or, or seen them um, depicted on Finding Your Roots. You know, they'll, they'll tell us a little bit about them. They were not good places. Laura, were you going to say something? Well, yeah, my husband has um, ancestors that ended up um, in the poorhouse in what's now Manhattan. Uh -huh. like that was how people started out. And oh, so wow. I guess that was... But that was, and they had come from the Netherlands. So oh. they were maybe all across Europe, you know, there wasn't social services. I mean, yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. Um, but you know what I really, really loved about Brian Cox, and it really isn't such a genealogical thing as, you know, he talked about his dad died when he was eight. His mother started having electric shock treatment. Yes. And all this. So, so he had this terrible childhood, but yet when um, Dr. Gates asked him, what are, what are you proudest of? And he said that there's still a boy inside of me. Oh, yes. And uh, I thought that was so cool that he can, he ha had that ability to look back and not yeah. see it all as bad yeah. and, and see the joy of youthfulness that was still in him. Yeah. I thought that was a great way for him to end his story. You, well, yeah, not think, literally end his story, but you right, know, right. that, that yeah. section on. And, <laughs> yeah. Really. And I think, I think too, that's why he got a big kick out of his ancestors shenanigans. <laughs> that <kept letting> him <laughs> in jail. <laughs> so I think he was relating a little bit <laughs> to that 17 year old and that 21 year old. So I thought that was pretty funny too, because he really was getting a kick out of it. You know, he wasn't I was like, oh no, what was he doing? So, oh goodness. Let's let's move over to um episode six. Let's uh, let's start with Joe um Mag and I'm gonna say this wrong. Maganello. Did I say it right? I've been right. saying it all day. <laughs> I knew I'd going to get on here and say it wrong. It's not like I don't know who he is as an actor. I just keep having, uh, my my um, grandpa used to say, my tongue keeps getting wrapped around my eye teeth so I can't see what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 I feel that way a lot. So he had a great, great story. And I know several of you really wanted to um, take a bite out of this and talk a little bit about this. Dan, do you have Armenian? No. Uh, oh, for some reason, There's I was thinking you might. Countries in, in that region of the world that I don't have ancestors is Armenia. So. Ah, all righty. Anybody want to start off with the story of his grandmother, Rose? I'll mm -hmm. go for it. Okay, uh, thank you, Dan. So, well, ho hopefully the video holds out. Yeah, um, if not, just start off and just keep talking. All right. Um. So, so his uh, great-grandmother, Rose was uh, Armenian and living in Turkey in the Ottoman Empire, what's now Turkey. And uh, during the Armenian genocide, some soldiers came in and killed her husband and was it six of the seven kids or seven of eight kids? I seven can't of remember. Eight, seven of seven eight. Kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she was shot as well, but she just laid there and pretended she was dead um, and then took the surviving child and ran away and as she was crossing, swimming across the river Euphrates, the child drowned. And then she finally made it to a German Red Cross camp where she was impregnated by a German soldier. And then, um, and then eventually moved to the United States, remarried, um, and then became famous for being Joe Manganello's great grandmother. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. <laughs> uh, I mean, what a what a what a story. What an amazing yeah. woman. What an and and that he knew that story. I I love the fact that he knew the story of of but that. he didn't know the circumstances of who who the who Rose's the father of Rose's child exactly. was right. And so they were yeah. able to use DNA to establish him as a German soldier. Mm -hmm. um who then i 
the story just got more and more interesting that um, the soldier went back to Germany after um, his time in in the um, Red Cross camp and had a family Mm -hmm. and several children. Um, And one of his sons um, was a Nazi. Yeah. Um, SS officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. SS officer. Yeah. 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 So, so. Yeah. Yeah. So to, 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 to just find that was really kind of mind blowing for him yeah, that too, it's basically yeah, his, his, um, I guess his, his grandmother's or his dad's, whoever it was, his dad or his mom's cousin was an SS officer. Yeah. 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 Just, and he said, you know, I've got two uh, Holocausts in my family. I've got the Armenians and I've got, you know, the Jews. I mean, my yeah. ancestors participated in those things. And so, yeah. you know, on either side, either a victim yeah. or the soldier, you know, yeah. who was victimizing people. Yeah. But they brought out a picture of this soldier that was absolutely mind blowing because it looked just like him. Yeah. Just like him. Yeah. Yeah. The eyes were just. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, I just need to, I just need to grow the mustache and the. <laughs> I mean, the build, everything was so, and it, it just really blew his mind. He he said he felt like he'd gone back in time, that it was just this odd, weird feeling that he had as he looked at those pictures. Just, it, that was, I thought that was just an amazing, an amazing story, a, a mind blowing story. You would think, you would think that that would be enough for one man for one story right but the but you know dan you mentioned that his um, there's more (laughs) well well, part of that more too is that that marriage that second marriage of rose it listed her parents so that got them back another generation so that was that was wonderful and you know they they don't know if they died uh, before or during they may have already passed away before the soldiers came in and were annihilating everybody. So they may not have had that horror. They just don't know. So, but anyway, um, anybody want to uh, talk about his paternal roots? <laughs> <laughs> Another DNA story here. They found out that his grandpa on paper was not his grandpa biologically. He's Somebody. not a manganello. He's a he's, what was it, cutler. He's a uh-huh, a cutter cutter. Yeah, he's definitely not. Yeah, and it, it <laughs> so that he called his dad because they wanted they always do that. They always give them. They're not going to blindside somebody and say, "Look what we found!" Dun dun dun. You know, they just <laughs> do that on this show. So they always call him ahead of time and just say, "Do you want us to stop production? We could just do this one site and leave it at that." Um, and he said he told his dad and his dad was not even really surprised because mm. he said he didn't get along with his dad. And now he knew why because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't his biological dad. Yeah. So, yeah. So they did. Sometimes when things like that happen, uh, happens, it's like it, everything clicks. Every, that's what, yeah. He's, or, he was, or, he or immediately every, you, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard, I've heard people say that immediately. Yeah everything they kind of like replay it all in a couple of seconds and it just all makes sense to them yeah yeah really yeah so um so they they were able with the help of cc Moore again it was great to see her little just yeah face for a couple of minutes or drawing on the board and all that kind of stuff so they were able with um dna matches to be able to go back to a common ancestor and then move down is is how it works and found a family that had was it five boys? Any of those five boys could have been the dad. But they ruled out two because they were the birth dates and their where they were at the time and things like that um, did not match. But they finally figured out which one was the dad. Um, and it turns out too that that family was a mixed family. They were had come from um, those that original couple that they were coming down from those great grandparents. I think it was great grandparents. The, uh, the husband was black and the wife was white and they had gotten married at a time period where it was illegal, but they did it anyway. And so then he finds out that that means 
that he's 7% Af sub sub Saharan um, African. And so that blew his mind. That completely blew his mind. <laughs> he's learning so many things on this show that, you know, most people come on and they get one little zinger, mm -hmm. but he's, <laughs> he's getting all of these on, on both sides of his family. And I think he handled that. I think he handled that really well. I don't think he, it was something that like some of the guests get kind of upset about things like that, but I think he handled it well, uh, Mary. Yeah. I, but I'm back to, I, I didn't, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't think they could. There was the five boys and they could rule out, uh -huh. I think, a couple because they were like eight years old or something. Well, maybe maybe they didn't pick up. Maybe but they did. They maybe were, I'm wrong. They were down yeah. to three. Right. And I, think yeah, I never two. said which one. No, you're yeah, right. It's you're one right. of those yeah, three. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Because yeah. they can't. They, yeah. they can't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, the only I mean, way they'd be able to do that is to prove that these two were never in any place where the mom was at any time. That's that's hard to prove. I mean, yeah, yeah. We don't have paper records showing exactly everywhere right, we go right. all the time. And exactly. Just she might have exactly. been next door to one of the brothers, but it was the other brother that you know yeah, came to visit. Right. To yeah. Visit well, and exactly. or mom might have gone to visit. Gone that's somewhere. One of these so episodes before where you think mm -hmm. dad had to be where mom was, but that's maybe right. mom it was, was temporarily where dad was. <laughs> right. So exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. those things are hard to prove. Thank you. Thank you for um, keeping me straight on that. So, so yeah, all that. Yeah. They know it was one of those boys and he which, does. Which state was it that it was illegal to have mixed well, marriage? A lot of states. A lot of states. Tennessee but was in this one of those. episode, I was just going to. Oh, Rhode Island. They were in Rhode Island. Oh, it was Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Now, yeah. I don't know. I have not looked at Rhode Island to see, but all I know is on the show, they said it was illegal. It, the too. law was repealed in 1881. In um, Rhode I did look it up earlier. Oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. I put it in the chat. But oh, oh, I don't have my chat okay. open. Sorry, okay. Mary. <laughs> Um, then, then going back from there, they found out that he had a, a fifth great grandfather named Pla Plato Turner, who was born in Africa. They actually found records that said that he was born in Africa, which is not impossible by any stretch of the imagination, but, but it's not something that's found all the time. Um, and he became free and then he fought in the revolutionary war and they found his pension record. That is absolutely amazing. And our, our own Shelly Murphy is doing a book right now on Black Patriots. So I wonder if she uh, has this guy. If not, she's add this guy to her book. Yes, Laura. So he had, so Dr. Gates indicated that it was very few Black people are able to find a ship manifest with their ancestor's name on it. Right. So he had to be he had to be a little bit frustrated that here's this guy that had no idea, had never searched for it. And then <laughs> here it is. That's right there. But then I had no the idea that every genealogist has been searching. Has been looking for <laughs> some guy that didn't even know anything about it. And they found it. Here's your silver platter. Yeah. I just thought his story was amazing and sad. It was so sad with I think it's one of the saddest stories so far that, that we've heard, especially that baby drowning. I mean, lived through, and they had left that baby. They thought they'd shot everybody, left that baby to starve to death. That's why, yeah. Almost, yeah. And and so, you know, that it would drown. It just breaks my heart. She tried so hard and fought so valiantly. She, to... she was a very strong woman. Yeah. She, she went through a lot. And, you know, we think, we should think about the, what our ancestors, and I think we talked about this mm -hmm. in a previous episode, about how much our ancestors went through so we could be here. Exactly. Wherever we are. Yeah. You know? And I think, I think as, as a good segue, I think that's one of the comments that uh, Tony Gonzalez made when they were talking mm -hmm. to him is that sometimes I think I've had a rough life, but now that I look <laughs> back and see what they went through, this is nothing compared to what they went through. So, um, well, not yeah. only that, but each generation has its own struggles, its own, its own, struggles. Its own yeah. victories, its struggles, whatever it is that, that exactly. each generation has. And so, even mm -hmm. our generation, you know, we go through yeah. our own for our children and our grandchildren so okay. that they can live. Because, you know, that's that saying we, we always want our children to have it better than we did. Exactly. 
Exactly. And so I think that is just like the common thread through history is that we always yeah. want our children to do better than, or have it better than we had it, we had you know? It. And so, um, and so, yeah, I think if we could, as researchers, when we're researching our answers, sometimes it's difficult to wrap our brains around why they did what they did, um, what happened to them, you know, the situations and the things they lived through. Um, but I think that we should make an effort, you know, read some books on the social history of the time period or yeah. read some books about like an event. Like right now I'm researching my husband's third great grandfather. Uh, he was with the 83rd with the, he was with a Kentucky regiment, which was a union regiment. I think I've mentioned it. He, he and his two sons, uh -huh. They went AWOL and were court-martialed and all kinds of things. But now I'm I'm, I'm thinking, you know, well, why did they, was just, they were fed up. You know, I'm asking yeah. those questions. I mean, I get those questions answered, <laughs> but now I'm looking for a book on yeah. this particular regiment. I want to read. See what I want was to, going on. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I have his service records. It gives, you know, how it has on the service records. It'll say yeah. March and April of a particular year present. Yes. Well, that's not much on a record, but if you go and look up the history of that regiment, you can see all the battles and when those right. battles were, exactly. and you can add to, okay, well, yep. he was present, which means he was at this battle. Yeah. Well, then exactly. read about the battle. Read about the battle. Absolutely. Right. Such good advice. We need to move beyond those na names, dates, and places mm -hmm. and really learn, learn from their stories because I think it helps us in our lives. It gives us, um, I think it, it helps us have a little bit of power saying if they could get through this then I can get through whatever I'm going through so I think it's really good to do that um the very you know he was on a mission Tony he 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 was on a mission for his grandmother his yes. grandmother is 104 years old <laughs> <laughs> 104 years old and she wanted to know her who her biological parents were because she was raised by other people and so that's what they were assigned to do for him is Grandma wants to know who her, who her. I also wanted to throw in just because I looked it up. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Today, after Kansas City just won the Super Bowl, that Tony <laughs> Gonzalez, he was drafted by Kansas City in 97. He didn't spend his whole career there, but he spent the majority of it. He's played for 17 seasons as a tight end. I wasn't familiar with him, I have to confess. But um, yeah, he's put up a lot of big records and very cool very cool very cool the only clue that they had was this name bird song and so right. they were able to go through the census records and find um find the bird song family and they were able to put the family together and uh they didn't say they did any dna on the side of the family so i'm not sure um how they connected this particular bird, bird song to know that this was the right family. Do you know what I mean? Um, so they yeah. found, yeah, they found a Ophelia living with Maria Birdsong. Okay. Her and grandmother. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and that was in uh, 1900. And then um, also in 1900, Maria's daughter. So we've got Maria, we've got Ophelia living with, Maria. And then we've got Maria's daughter, Dora, who's actually the mom. Um, she, she had moved to Alabama. She had left Ophelia and her brothers and moved on to, Al to Alabama, just left them there. Then they don't know why that happened, but they, they were left in New York. Um, so they said, okay, we, we have found the family we know the maternal but we have no idea who the father was and so they did dna trying to find the dad and it turned out that it was a man named john reese hudson no relation <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. um and he was a white man and he had wondered because he'd seen pictures of ophelia and she looked white to him he said you know and people had said that she was white so he had wondered about that but she was living on property, um, tenant farming on property that he owned. He actually worked in New York and would come back and forth. So we're assuming that's when they got together. But again, illegal for a marriage, if that's the kind of relationship they had. We don't know what kind of relationship they had. It could have been consensual. It may not have been. Um, so 
it's interesting that uh, it's interesting that he then moved back there and had a wife and children and lived in the area. I just think that's really, really interesting um, that he moved back <laughs> and, and lived in the area. So um, anyway, that's, that's the story that they found. And so he was so excited to be able to go and share that with his 104 year old grandma. I hope she lived long enough. I hope nothing <laughs> happened to her. <laughs> you know, he even said that he thought, he said, you know, this is probably why she's lived this well, long so still... she could find this stuff out. Yeah. So, so she could find this stuff out. So mm-hmm. I thought that was fabulous that they could answer that question for her. I'm like, yes, do it for her. Do it for her. The other interesting story they found for him was that he had a third great grandfather named George who was born into slavery in 1829. And they lived in Wilmington, North Carolina. And they showed a runaway slave ad. And mm-hmm. so we've never seen those before. The newspapers in that time yep. period were full of them because they would run away. This was their property. So they would put an ad in the paper with a reward to get them back. It's sad, but for African-American families, if that's your ancestor, it gives you a description, mm. tells you what they yeah. what job they may have been doing on the plantation, where they were running to, if they knew they had family, they'd say, we think that he's headed for this place where he has children, a wife, you know, so you can get a lot of clues from those if you're researching um, African-American genealogy. So he was all excited. Yes, they ran away. Yes, they ran away. I tried to run away too. And then they showed him kind of part two in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, yeah. never mind. He's been caught, right? Right. And so he ended up being sold. And of course, Another assumption, they said he ran away because he didn't want to be sold. We don't know why he ran away. Mm, nobody knows why. Don't. He, no, nobody knows why he ran away. It wasn't in the ad. He ran away because we were going to sell him. That You know, there, nobody knows why he ran no, away. We so, don't. You know, yeah. and it's it's one of the more um, famous or infamous, whatever you want to say, um, case like that is uh, George Washington's slave yeah. on the judge. Yes. Who, who, um, and there was something in the newspaper, um, and they never caught her. Although after a while she started, she was kind of living out in the open, but she was, yeah. Yeah. And so there's actually a book about that. So if you ever want to read about that type of incident, I would encourage you to read that book, but I'm with you. I, I, you know, um, I think there's a lot more behind the scenes of the show research that we don't get yeah, to hear about just, that gets on mm-hmm. the cutting room floor or, or yeah. they never address. And so yeah. I hope that a lot of their assuming is stuff that they just can't share maybe. And so they do have some proof, but yeah, yeah. Let, yeah, hope so. Well, he was sold, but luckily he was sold to another family nearby in Wilmington. So they weren't too far apart and in some communities, they were allowed, we don't know if they were, they were allowed to go visit and um, get together. And sometimes um, slaves were hired out or rented for the day from one plantation to the other, or they, on their short little days off, um, they could go visit other plantations. They had to get permission. And it just depended on that community. And they may not have let him do anything because he ran away, but they may have let her come visit him. Who knows? And the, and the children. But the interesting thing and the thing that just touched my heart was by 1866, after the war, they are found in the, re- the cohabitation records is what they were called. And so they, as soon as they could, they were living together and were married and um, under the law, the cohabitation laws. And I just thought that was wonderful that, that they were able to do that. And by 1870, they owned their own home and land, which is amazing Mm -hmm. as well. So here's this former slave that had run away, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, um, was sold away from his family, got back together with his family and owned his own home and owned his own land. And then on top of that, In the newspaper in 1875, it said that he was part of the black militia in town. He was a leader of the black militia in town. So that story ended up really well. I thought that really was wonderful that they were able to, because a lot of times, the majority of the time when they were sold away from each other, they never saw each other again. There are, there are, there were things in the paper trying to, they would put ads in the paper trying to find their their loved ones a lot of reason that some of the um 
the formula, formerly enslaved never left the area was they were hoping their family would come back and they would know where to find them. So people say, well, why didn't they just leave? Well, number one, they didn't. Sometimes they just couldn't leave. There was they didn't no have the means. A lot of the times, yeah, they yeah. didn't have the means to leave. But a lot of times, it was because they were hoping their family would. That's yeah. the last place they saw each other. So they were. Hoping- and that's. I think there's more truth to that than what we tend yeah. to understand because yeah. I, I get asked a lot about you know well, why if they're free why would they stay on the same plantation yeah. and do well like like you said they may not have means to leave but. You know, their family members, if they have family members that were sold off that may fi- come looking for them, they want to, like you said, they want to be in that last place that they knew that they were. And that's the only home for a lot. They didn't, they didn't know yeah. the other place, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. Um, so it, it was, that was a very difficult time to make those kind of decisions. The fun, fun thing they ended with. So anybody want to talk about who he was related <laughs> to? Who is his uh, first cousin 12 times? <sighs> Mood? William Mary? Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> William Shakespeare. Is that yeah. amazing? Is that amazing? I think that's really funny. <laughs> I like how this season it seems like that they're saying more often we can prove this with paperwork, with yeah. documents. They yeah. don't show us, but they say yeah. that. And so, yeah. you know, I'm hoping that um because there might be someone else out there that thinks that they're related to Shakespeare. Maybe they could use that documentation too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's, I think it was really fun. These, um, all four of them, I thought were really interesting, interesting. And I liked the way the guest handled yes. some of this information that was very hard and very difficult. Um, I think they handled it well and they, they were, um, I don't know. I, when they talked to Tony about, um, the fact that his ancestor had been enslaved and when they showed him the picture of the enslaver Mm -hmm. and and henry lewis gates asked him how do you feel looking at this picture of this man he said angry at first but then i realized it is what it is it was the time period he he may have been an idiot and doing idiot things but that's all he knew he didn't know not to do that and um You know, it's a generational thing. They were taught to do it. His father did it. His father before him did it. That's the way life. You don't works. know what you don't know. Exactly. You don't know what you don't know. Um, you know, if you don't know to not yeah. feel this way or to be this way, you, right. you know, you don't know any other way to be. Exactly. So, yeah. exactly. So I thought that was very interesting that he had that. Um, he had I that. thought that was an interesting reaction to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wondered though, because Dr. Gates always asks people, like in every episode, how does yeah. it make you feel to see this picture? How does it feel yeah. to know that? How does it? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and then it, whatever it, they say they feel, he's not going to tell them they're wrong to feel yeah. the way they feel. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. You never tell anybody they're wrong about the way they but feel. He did. Because a lot of times you have to work through that. The initial feeling may not be what you feel after you thought through something, you know? That's why I thought with Brian Cox, it was so interesting that when Brian Cox said something about how it made him feel, Dr. Gay says, that's a good one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it also brings up a point for us too. And for other researchers, when you're doing your genealogy research and you find a piece of information, do you put in your notes and in your uh, documentation, how you feel? That's a good point. About right? finding that. Was that something that you would put in uh, yeah. for your descendants to for your see own personal, about how you yeah. felt when you yeah. found this, out this information? And so it's something interesting to think about. Yeah, that is a very interesting thing to do. I'm going to have to start doing that. <laughs> you know, I like that. that idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talk about writing mm-hmm. our family stories and the histories yeah. and all this stuff. You know, well, you know, part of that history is our history of doing the research, uh, exactly finding all this. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That that's that's really good, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> I like that a lot. And then to come back to it too, because you might feel differently. Oh yes, yeah. Exactly. But as I'm saying, sometimes when you work through issues and you 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 look at more records and you understand a little bit about the social history, the community, like we're talking about. You know, read those newspapers to see what was going on. Read those county history books and 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 all those kind of things and start learning about the area you may find that what your ancestor did 
at that time was not considered as heinous as we consider it in our, the way we look at things today. Um, I, I can think back to ancestors I've researched and when I first found some things, I've thought, oh, this yeah. is a horrible person or, oh, yeah. this is a, you know, whatever. Yeah. But then the more I do research, the more my thinking changed. Exactly. Just like Laura said. And so it would be interesting to document that and to, yeah. you know, I don't know, I might add to the, to the story. That's a, I like that. I like that a lot. Mary, were you going to say something? I just told thinking about the, you know, I would never do that kind of <laughs> thing that yes. we yeah. aren't in those circumstances. No, and right. You can't really say it. Nope. I think a more interesting question is what would I have done in the circumstances? And that's what I tell people like to paint yeah. that story of people's circumstances yeah, and not just so just not stats and socioeconomics, like what was the family like, the community like, the culture yeah. like, and then kind of put it back on the reader. How would you have fared in those situations? Because right. it's really and, interesting and the to read these stories. Yeah. I, sometimes I have a moment when... I accomplished something and I think I could have been a pioneer woman. And then I realized <laughs> I used YouTube. That wasn't an option. <laughs> you know, we can apply that to us. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at all of us. I think all of us are old enough to remember when there were no cell phones. Exactly. <laughs> and Not so if you're I don't know, maybe you can. <laughs> so, you know, if you have a child or a grandchild that asks you, well, what was it like not to have a cell phone? Yeah. yeah. You know, how do you explain that? It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's a very simple take on this, but you know, it's kind of the same thing. Right. I, I was actually, at... Melissa, I was at a um, hardware store where a gentleman had on his Pearl Harbor hat mm -hmm. and the young guys were asking him questions. And so he said something about, yeah, when we heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor on, on the radio, and they're like, what do you mean on the radio? And he <laughs> yes. Said, he said, yes. Well, we got out of school, yeah. and everybody walked downtown, and there was an electronic store, and they had a radio. And after school every day, we'd go down to that shop and listen to the news. And I think because he was talking about high school, he was talking to high schoolers. It really connected with them yeah. that they like, oh, dude, you didn't even, <laughs> you didn't even have TVs. You just, you know, I know. So, so, yeah. video. but I think sometimes about the sounds that we'll never hear again, unless it's an old movie or our kids and grandkids or great grandkids, they're never going to hear the sound of a rotary dial. You know, when you dial, when you dial, how about phone, dial up internet? <laughs> yeah. you know, it went like that, that, that will be that that's good i think i'm happy for that generation not to suffer the sound yeah, of really the does. <laughs> there's so many there's so many there's so many words and tools and things that go by the wayside as as technology and, yes. and progress and we don't use things anymore we don't even know what these things are we, we have no idea and some that's a, another good reason why when we're looking at old documents we need to look up words and not assume they mean what yeah. they mean today yeah. we need to look mm -hmm. it up because times have changed so there's 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 so many things that that um are their lives were just different and they were taught differently and the world wasn't as big their worlds were small compared to the way we live now. I mean, we've got 24 seven news. We know what's going on everywhere all the time. They only lived in their small little communities. Maybe got we can go further in an hour yes. than some of our ancestors went their entire life. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so yes. that's why we've got to be so careful about not putting our thinking the way we view things on the way they view things they just... and, but i'll also swap that and i know we're trying to get ahead but i also will yeah. turn that the other way um i know that mary her she does some fantastic presentations on doing newspaper research yes but the local newspaper yeah. not all of them but a lot of them their front page was national news that's true it was yeah. And so in, in a weird way, they knew more than we give them credit for knowing. Yeah, this is true. And it may have taken them longer to, to get to know it. Yes, but, yes. Yeah, it but I've always yeah, been surprised yeah. by how much mm -hmm. state and national news was in yeah. the local, little bitty local newspaper. Yep, yep, yep. Now, but the, also, too, then you can see 
if the whole community felt the same way your ancestors yeah. felt. Yeah. Because there there could be people that were living at the same place at the same time and they they made different decisions. That can yeah, be very read the, read the opinion. The opinion columns are very, oh, very yeah. interesting. Letters, letters to the letters editor, to the editor <laughs> are very, very interesting in those old newspapers. But I thought this this was a good couple of um episodes again. Yeah, it was good. Um yeah, I like watching them because I learned things too about history places where i don't research and and yes. things i didn't know i mean i knew basically what happened you know um the but, armenian story uh, was very sad but it was very interesting because it's like yes. you said it was the place that i don't research and so um, yeah and learning about I different that cultures was also, it was interesting to watch him look at the picture of the <laughs> the nazi soldier oh, and yeah. like that's our bone structure. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I think in those terms, but it was very interesting to watch him do that visual processing yeah. of yeah. the photo yeah. and yeah. his family looks and stuff. Yeah. And I do think some families have genes that are just far more expressive than like my family. We just took kind of come, we're just kind of amalgamations of each other. We're not like <laughs> We don't have a, like a feature where somebody will say, oh, that's them. Yeah. I, I, and I, I agree with you, Laura. And the reason I do agree with you is because being a county archivist in a, in a small county, um, we have photographs that need to be identified. And I'll have people look at them and they'll go, oh, well, that one there has to be of this family. <laughs> or that one there has to be of this family because yeah. they see yes. the features and they go, this right. is that family. Yeah, yeah. All right, Dan, you have anything to say about this episode? You, it's like you're, he says he's afraid to talk because his camera can't do anything. Yeah, to, to do too much. Otherwise, the camera's going to start wigging out again. No, I, I you know, I, I enjoyed uh, the episode. I especially enjoyed Joe's story um, just because, um, you know, I had family that were also in a different, different part of the world, but it were affected by the sort of round of genocides that occurred around and after uh, the first world war. And, um, you know, and so that's, uh, you know, whenever that, whenever you have that kind of connection, even though I'm not Armenian, um, mm -hmm. it still, you know, it still hits home a little bit. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the reality that a lot of these people had to, to deal with, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. uh, with my grandmother coming to this country as a refugee, um, you know, I, that's, that, that part of it really kind of hit home and, um, you know, and makes you think about those that are coming here today and what their stories yeah. are. And, you know, yeah. when, when this show is still going on in 20 years, what, what their stories are going to be like, and, yeah. and we're going to be heartbroken to hear some of those stories too. So. Exactly. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, thank you everybody for, for joining tonight. This has been really fun and interesting. And I know I learned a lot from all four of these, um, these episodes and, and uh, just amazed at stories that make a family, you know, just amazed at the things that we don't know <laughs> about our families as we discover them through genealogy research, through DNA research. So if you had anything that you want to uh, bring up that you felt was interesting about these shows, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And um, we will see you next time on Gen Friends, and we hope you enjoyed the show. And leave us a comment, like us as Dan always has. <laughs> Click to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.